Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and still I rise. I rise, Mr. Speaker, because I love my country. I love what it stands for. Mr. Speaker, I am a person who sings the national anthem. I salute the flag, but I also respect those who, as a matter of principle, choose not to do as I. I love my country. I believe that one of the hallmarks of our justice system is the concept that no person is above the law. No person. Doesn't matter where you were born. Doesn't matter where you happen to be in life. Doesn't matter what office you happen to hold. No person is above the law. This is something that people revere us for the world over. The belief that in this country, you will not be above the law, but they also understand that in doing this, no person will be beneath the law. The law applies equally to all in the United States of America. I believe in this concept to the extent that I will stand alone and say that the President of the United States is not to be above the law. And I will stand alone because on some things, it is better to stand alone than not stand at all. So I will stand alone, say to the world that in this country, wherein we indicate in the Pledge of Allegiance, liberty and justice for all, in this country, wherein we recognize that all persons are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. In this country, no person is above the law. And when it comes to the law as it relates to the President of the United States of America, the place where the President is brought before the bar of justice is this House of Representatives. This is the place where the law and the president will come together. And in this place, because of the Constitution of the United States of America, Article 2, Section 4, if a president commits impeachable acts, the president is brought before this bar of justice, not brought here in person, but those acts are called to the attention of the House of Representatives. Each member of the House can do so. And in so doing, each member can have what's called a privileged resolution presented. And when this resolution is presented, a president who is believed to have committed an impeachable act can be brought before this House, this bar of justice. Those acts can be voted upon. This is the only place on the planet Earth where a president of the United States can be brought to justice while in office in this House of Representatives. This is why I have stood my ground. I have said that this president, who has committed impeachable acts, must be brought before the House of Representatives, his impeachable acts, his impeachable behavior. And I marvel at those who would say that the president has done things that merit his impeachment but would then go on to say, but I don't think we should impeach him. They will say so, they don't think so, because if we do so, the president won't be convicted in the Senate. The Constitution of the United States of America does not require conviction in the Senate before there is impeachment in the House. The House acts first, and then the Senate is given the opportunity to give its response. In this House of Representatives, it is imperative that we let the world know because the world is watching. The world is watching the United States of America, which means it's really watching this House of Representatives. They want to see if we are going to allow a president who has committed impeachable acts 
They want to see if we are going to allow him to escape the long arm of the law. They're going to see and want to see whether or not we truly believe that no one is above the law, and that includes the President of the United States of America. We must act. Mr. Mueller has taken up the cause. We outsourced the investigation to the executive branch of the government, which was not the appropriate thing to do. The framers of the Constitution never intended that the agents of the executive branch investigate the chief executive office officer, which would be the president, for impeachment purposes. That was never contemplated. They gave us Article 2, Section 4, so that we, the members of this august body, would take up our duty, our responsibility, and our obligation. They gave us the way. The question is, do we have the will? Mr. Mueller has done his job. He has submitted to us his report. And that report alone is enough for us to bring articles of impeachment. That report is based upon persons giving statements that were subject to the penalty of perjury if they should give untruthful statements. It is clearly a roadmap to impeachment. Mr. Mueller has so much as said, not in these exact words, but when you understand the import of his language, he has so much as said that if I could bring the president to justice, I would. But they have a rule. They have a mandate in the Justice Department that they will not indict a sitting president. Whether you agree with that or not, that is the rule that Mr. Mueller believes in, and he followed it. But he went on to say that he is not exonerating the president by not bringing the president before the bar of justice. He is simply saying to us, I have done what I am allowed to do. Now, Congress, it is up to you. I have given you what I believe is the evidence. You take this evidence and do with it what you believe to be appropriate. If Congress takes this evidence and simply sits on it, if we engage in the paralysis of analysis, a phrase that I borrow from Dr. Martin Luther King, if we investigate until someone will eventually say, well, it's too late to go on with impeachment. It's too late now. It will look political. Let's just wait until the next election. That's not what the framers of the Constitution intended. They intended for us to have the will to follow the way that they accorded us in the Constitution. We made it clear that we wanted to wait on the Mueller report. Well, we've waited. Now there are persons who are saying, let's wait until the next election. I refuse to wait until the next election. I refuse to send the world a message that, as a member of this body, I allowed the president to go unchecked, that I did not bring articles of impeachment. Mr. President, I want you to know that the hand of justice awaits you. I want you to know that this body is going to take up impeachment. And here is why. If we fail to do so, we will allow the president, who has committed impeachable acts, to go out and market himself as a person who has been vindicated by our inaction. He will say to the world, if I committed an impeachable act, they surely would have brought impeachment before the House of Representatives. After all, one party has more than enough members to bring impeachment uh, before the House without the help of another party. He will tell the world that there was no collusion and he did nothing that would merit impeachment. This is what he would say. He would have that liberty. Even if he doesn't say it, he'd have the liberty, and my guess is that he would. That is what I believe. So we must bring impeachment before this body so as not to allow a president who has done things worthy of impeachment to go out and contend that he is not subject to impeachment and that he should be considered a person who has been vindicated by our inaction. What are some of the things that the president has done that would merit his impeachment? 
Let's just start with Mr. Mueller's report, and I won't go through everything in its entirety. He lists some 10 possibilities. I'm just going to mention uh, trying as best as he could to get people to have the investigation terminated by having the person who's performing the investigation fired, having that person resign, have that person cease and desist. Um, the president started this with Mr. Comey. When he, Mr. Comey, was investigating the president's association by and through his campaign with Russia, interference in our elections, this kind of thing is something that we would want to have investigated. That was the genesis of it. And then we can move forward to the latest rendition that Mr. Mueller has given us as it relates to the counsel to the president and his desire to have the counsel have word given to certain parties that the president desires to have probably not say that, but that was his desire, to have the, 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 the lawyer who was investigating Mr. Mueller have Mr. Mueller uh, removed. This is not acceptable. This is an obstruction. The, the obstruction takes place when you attempt to do such a thing. So there are other things in between. As important as these are, I believe, separating babies from their mothers as a policy is impeachable when you add it to the many other things that he has done with reference to people of color. To say that the countries in Africa are S-hole countries and then develop policies, immigration policies, if you will, that address immigration uh, from these countries. You're putting your bigotry into policy. To say that there were some nice people among the racists, the bigots, the xenophobes, the Islamophobes, the homophobes, the Klansmen, the neo-Nazis who marched in Charlottesville, where a person lost her life, where others were injured, injured, to say that there were some very fine people among them, very, very nice people, if you will, among them. If I said that, I assure you, there would be a penalty for my doing so. If any member of Congress said such a thing, there would be a penalty for doing so. I'm not above the law. Members of Congress are not above the law. And the President cannot be above the law. To say this gives these persons who were screaming blood and soil, Jews will not replace us, to say that we will not take up this cause in this House is to say that the President is above the law. When we know if one of our members did it, we would take up this cause in the House of Representatives. The President cannot be above the law. No member of this House can be above the law. No judge can be above the law. No police officer can be above the law. The law applies equally to all. So the President has engaged in these invidious, harmful acts, harmful to society, telling members of the constabulary, the police, that when you have persons in your custody, you don't have to be nice with them. We know about how many persons have been uh, mishandled in the hands of the police. Not all police do this, but some have. In fact, many have gone to jail. But that doesn't mean that all law enforcement officers are bad. It just means that those who did it are. And we don't want to encourage others to do such a thing. So the President has committed impeachable acts. And these impeachable acts can be brought to this House, and they must be brought before the House of Representatives. Right now, the President is committing obstruction by causing persons who should appear before Congress, various committees, by doing all that he can to cause them not to appear. He is continuing to obstruct. He does not want congressional committees to perform their lawful duties, the duties that have been accorded them. He's standing in the way, thwarting as much as he can, wants to thwart subpoenas. He wants to 
uh, make impotent the subpoena power of the Congress of the United States of America. This is a continuation of his obstruction. His obstruction has to be checked. This is where it is checked. There is currently, as I stand and speak to you, a constitutional crisis taking place. There is a standoff between the executive branch, wherein the president is at the helm, and the House of Representatives. A standoff exists as I speak to you. This is a constitutional crisis. The president is creating this constitutional crisis. The president ought to be brought before the bar of justice for obstructing for what he's doing right now to create this constitutional crisis. And don't let anybody kid you. I've heard persons on these news programs say that somebody has said that there's a constitutional crisis. Well, I'm that somebody. I have said it. And then they go on to say uh, something that would minimize the fact that there is a crisis. They'll be saying that there's a crisis soon. The very persons who are saying now, well, don't worry about that. They'll be saying it soon because the crisis is only going to intensify under this president. They will be saying there is a constitutional crisis. It's just a matter of time. And when they say it, somehow it's to have greater legitimacy than it does now when I'm saying it. I believe that we must speak truth to power. I didn't come to Congress to do this. It's not my desire to be the canary in the coal mine. It's not my desire to take on the President of the United States, the most powerful person in the world. I do it because I love my country. I do it because we cannot allow a reckless, ruthless, lawless President to remain in office. He has to be impeached. I do it because I believe that we cannot allow political expediency to trump the moral imperative to do that which is right. I do it because we have to make these talking points that we have an action item. And that action item is to bring the president before the bar of justice. Mr. Speaker, I love my country. And I promise those who believe as I do that you will see the president have his day in court right here in the Congress of the United States of America, where the framers of the Constitution intended that we hear the calls and take a vote. We will all have to vote. I don't lobby people. I simply say vote your conscience. But I do know this. I believe that history is not going to be kind to us if we take no action. We must act. I will act. I love my country. For this reason, I will do so. I yield back the balance of my time. Members are reminded to refrain from engaging in